this tutorial, we'll use Teledyne LaCroix Sierra M124 to create a simple CRC error on a SAS 12 gigabit link. We'll use the Jammer functionality that is part of the Sierra platform to inject this error. There are typically four steps in the process of creating an infusion test case. We'll walk through setting up the analyzer project. We'll then go to the infusion software and set up an infusion test scenario. We'll start the analyzer recording and then we'll start the infusion test case. There are several ways to configure the Sierra platform to perform the error injection function. It's not necessary to use the analysis mode at all, but most users will elect to record the error injection so they can see the results. The top configuration, Jammer followed by Analyzer, ensures that the Sierra platform will capture the traffic after the error is inserted. So you can confirm the error did occur as expected. It's also possible to record before the error is injected, although it's much harder to determine where the error occurred. And then the third configuration, Analyzer, Jammer, Analyzer, or AJA. This is the most popular configuration because it allows you to see the traffic before the error is injected as well as after. This is the Teledyne LaCroix SASATA protocol suite a single application that supports both the analysis features as well as the jammer. We'll start by creating a new analyzer project. You go to File New SAS Protocol Analyzer. You're presented with an options dialog that allows you to configure how the recording will operate. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a listing of the default settings that the analyzer will use every time you start a new project. Things like what to capture, what type of triggering to use, what size buffer. The default settings will work fine for this simple example. There are two critical settings that must be configured on the analyzer for successful recording of a jammer session. The first is the trigger event. It's highly recommended that you choose a trigger event in order to ensure you capture the precise point where the error occurs. For our CRC error example, there's a CRC trigger, which will be perfect for capturing this event. In the project tree window, you'll notice that CRC error is now checked as our trigger event. Now we'll switch to the settings tab. We'll go to the port configuration button. Here is where we specify which configuration we want the Sierra to use. By default, it will use analyzer mode across all four ports. Clicking the More button, we can see that we can choose AJA across any of the four ports. That is Analyzer, Jammer, Analyzer, which we'll choose for port 1. With this configuration, the Sierra will force the error on port 1. We'll record the traffic with the analyzer both before and after the jam. Notice that traffic on ports 2 through 4 will not be captured with this configuration. That's it. The analyzer is now configured. We close that dialog and we'll switch to the Jammer software. It's a different window within the same application. This is where we'll define the test scenario that we want the Sierra platform to use. Before we do that, the one critical step is to go into the port configuration button. You'll also need to specify that you're going to use AJA mode on port 1 in this dialog. With that setting complete, we'll go to the main library. This is where we'll find all of our test cases or scenarios that we've created previously. Double click on the new scenario icon. An empty test scenario appears on the left side, which we can now customize. It's a text-based interface, but it's purely menu-driven. Let's start by clicking on the scenario name and give it a specific name. We'll call it CRC Error Target. The other important field you need to specify in this window is, do you want the change to occur from the initiator direction or from the target direction? 
we're going to choose the initiator direction, which will allow us to see the behavior of the target when it receives a CRC error. The global rules is all you need for a simple error injection case, where you can specify a single wait condition followed by a single error. I usually use the sequencer, which allows you to add loops and multiple wait states. We'll start by clicking on Add Event within the state zero. That will pop up a dialog that shows almost every logical bus event that can be seen on a SAS or SATA physical link. This includes low level events like OOB or physical links just coming to the ready state to frame level events like FIS or SSP frames all the way up to logical SCSI commands. This tells the infusion system to wait for a specific event and then take some action. So I'm going to, for example, tell the system to wait for a data frame from the initiator direction. You can further qualify that frame by any other field within the header, including the hashed address, the retransmit bit. I'm going to specify not the first data frame, but the fifth that I count from the initiator direction. I'll click OK. The state zero now includes a brief description of the wait state for a data frame from the initiator with a count of five. You'll also notice that now there is an action line that I can now click on to specify the action I want to take. Some of the more important actions include inject an error, insert a D word, remove an event, substitute a pattern, or count the events. I'm going to choose inject CRC error, and let's go ahead and make it intermittent every 10 frames. I click OK. My scenario is now complete. The asterisk on the scenario name indicates it hasn't been saved yet to the library, so I'll click on the disk icon to save it. The final step before starting the jam session is to assign the scenario to a specific port. I'll bring up the port assignment window. I'll drag and drop the scenario onto port 1. This window allows us to run the same or a different jammer scenario on an adjacent port simultaneously. It lets you create more sophisticated test cases where you can modify traffic across a two wide or a four wide port. Okay, we're ready to run our scenario. It's always best to start the recording first, then run the jammer. You can start the analyzer recording from inside the jammer side of the software by pressing the record button. You'll then use the green button to start the jam session. The jam session is now running. I can see that the analyzer has triggered looking at the LEDs on the unit. I'll go ahead and stop the jam session and then I'll stop the recording. The software opens with the packet level view at the top of the trace. I'll use the go to trigger to take us directly to the point of the CRC error. There's a pop up window to confirm that it is a CRC error. And the target responds with a NAC CRC error. We're able to see the full recovery procedure by hiding the unassociated traffic, where we'll see that initiator, in fact, sends a task management function with a logical unit reset. Sometime later, it reissues the right command with the same logical block address. Notice how each packet seemingly appears twice. That's because we elected to record both before jam and after jam. The software recognizes this and labels each packet before jam and after jam so you can tell where the error should appear. You can use the channel button to hide packets that occurred before the jam. And now we're looking at only the packets that occurred after the jam. Here we have the original write with the bad CRC, with the correct task management function getting sent, the retry of the write command, and then correct operation going forward.
This summarizes how you can use the infusion system to test CRC error recovery at the system level.